Over the years, networks have become increasingly large and complex. Many different types of software generate traffic across hardware from an array of different vendors. As such, the need has arose to describe and analyze this data as it moves across the network. The Open Systems Interconnection Reference Model, or OSI model, was the first network model to change the face of network computing. Developed by the International Organization for Standardization, it helped develop a framework for standards and computer-to-computer -computer communications. The OSI model consists of seven different layers, which you can see here. It starts at the application layer, number seven, which is the user-generated layer, working with the software, and then the data generated at that layer proceeds through layer six, presentation, layer five, session, layer four, transport, layer three, network, layer two, data link, and then finally, the physical layer. Here we see a graphical representation of how the data originally is transmitted by the first user travels through all the layers down into the physical layer, travels over the physical link, and then travels back up through the layers to be presented at the application layer to the second user. Although the OSI model is undoubtedly the most popular model, it is often criticized for being too generalized, especially in the upper layers, such as the application, presentation, and session layers, where it is often said that the boundaries are not thoroughly defined and not sharp enough. For this and other reasons, the OSI model is currently being phased out and replaced by the more simple five-layer internet model, especially in the United States. The five-layer network model is very similar to the OSI model and essentially collapses the top three OSI layers into one layer. So it takes the application, presentation, and session layers of the OSI model and collapses them into one application layer on the network model. Whereas the OSI model is a formal standard, the internet model evolved from the work of thousands of people who develop pieces of the internet. This five-layer network model will be the model that we discuss throughout the remainder of this presentation. Here we have an example of a user drafting an email. The email client that he's using is located in the application layer. And once he finishes drafting this email, he'll click the send button, and this email will travel through the five different network layers, starting at this application layer, down to the physical layer, and then be transported over the network into another user's machine. Let's take a closer look at how this process works by taking a more in-depth look at each one of the different layers. Let's talk about the application later. What is the application later? Well, let's find out. The application layer allows users to interact with computer applications and send information over the networks. Oh cool, someone has sent me a letter. By comparing an email message to a letter, we can see why an application is important. On the outside of the letter, we typically see who the letter is addressed to and who it came from, but we can't see the message inside. With an email, an application allows us to open the message and read what's written inside. Without the appropriate application, we may not be able to see the actual message. Or, without the proper application, we may never receive the message at all. Just remember, lots of information is sent over the networks, but without the proper application, we can't see the correct information. Now you should be able to appreciate the importance of the application layer on the computer. See you next time. Goodbye. Now we'll be covering the transport layer of the OSI model. Transport layer is layer four in the OSI model. It falls between the networking layer and the session layer. What does the transport layer do? Well, it responds to requests, service requests from the session layer and also issues a service request to the network layer. These are the two layers that are both above and below it in the OSI model. It's also responsible for delivering the messages between host, and it's also responsible for creating an end-to-end -end connection between source IP and the destination IP. Responsibilities of the transport layer. It's responsible for end-to-end -end connection, error recovery, 
flow control, ensuring complete data transfer in TCP, and congestion avoidance. A little more detail on these. The end-to-end -end connection offers a reliable delivery of data to the destination. Error recovery is responsible for the resending of the data segments, which have the errors. In it. If anything has errors in it, it will resend it, and that's provided by TCP. Flow control is process of ensuring where the amount of data sent to the destination is affordable by it, which basically means uh, if it's flowing faster than the other destination can receive, it will work with that and control it from getting overflowed with information where the data is being sent to. And the major transport layer protocols include the following TCP, UDP, DCCP, and SCTP. Now UDP is used a good bit, but of course the most popular is the transmission control protocol, which works with uh, IP, the internet protocol, kind of hand-in-hand. Uh, -hand. In this section, we will cover the network layer, which is the third layer in the OSI model and is in charge of addressing data and then routing that data from one computer to another. We will also cover the main protocol used at this layer, the internet protocol, or IP, which is then paired with TCP at the transport layer. The main purpose of the network layer is addressing and routing. Addressing is basically specifying where the packet needs to go, and routing is figuring out how to get the packet to its destination in the fastest way possible. In order to understand the network layer, you need to understand what IP is and how it works. In a nutshell, IP is the method by which data is sent from one computer to another on the internet. Each computer, known as a host, on the internet has at least one IP address that uniquely identifies it from the other computers on the internet. When you send or receive data, for example, by sending an email address or requesting a web page, the message gets divided into little chunks called packets. Each of these packets contains both the sender's internet address and the receiver's address. Any packet is sent first to a gateway computer that understands a small part of the internet. The gateway computer reads the destination address and forwards the packet to an adjacent gateway that in turn reads the destination address and so forth across the internet until one gateway recognizes the package is belonging to a computer in its immediate domain. The gateway then forwards the packet directly to the computer whose address is specified. Because a message is divided into a number of packets, each packet can, if necessary, be sent along a different route across the internet. Packets can arrive in different orders than they were originally sent. The internet protocol just delivers them. It is up to another protocol, the Transmission Control Protocol, or TCP, to put them back together in the right order. IP is a connectionless protocol, which means that there is no continuing connection between the endpoints that are communicating. Each packet that travels through the internet is treated as an independent unit of data without any relation to any other unit of data. Next we'll talk about routing. Routing is the most important requirement of the internet and is carried out by IP. Routing involves communicating between two different networks through devices called routers on a shared common link like a WAN or over the internet. These routers are identified by their distinct IP addresses which ultimately becomes an address to access a particular network with which a router is connected. In this way, IP helps multiple users in distinct networks of different cities, countries, or even continents to communicate with each other easily and rapidly. To support routing, the network layer maintains logical addresses, such as an IP address, for devices on the network. The network layer also manages the mapping between these logical devices and physical devices. In IP networking, this mapping is accomplished through the address resolution protocol. In short, ARP is used to translate protocol addresses to hardware addresses. Now, let's take a look at the diagram, which illustrates how the network layer of the OSI model works. The network layer, as we have said, adds the concept of routing above the data link layer. As illustrated, when data arrives at the network layer, the source and destination address contained inside of each frame are examined to determine if the data has reached its final destination. If the data has not reached the final destination, the network layer updates the destination address in the header and pushes the frame back down to the lower address. 
If the packet has reached its destination, the network layer removes the network layer heading and passes the packet onto the transport layer. So, to sum up this section of the OSI model, it's important to remember that the network layer is in charge of addressing data and routing data from one computer to another. It is also important to know that the internet protocol is the main protocol used at the network layer. Again, IP is used when sending data from one computer out to the network. Lastly, the main type of hardware found at the network layer is a router. The physical layer is the first layer on the OSI model. The physical layer is the actual hardware, the network itself, but that is not the only thing the physical layer is. It is the only layer where data is physically moved. It also is responsible for encoding and signaling functions that change the data from bits into signals that can go over the network. The data link layer encapsulates the data and gets it ready for the physical layer to transmit the data. The physical layer actually transmits the data over the network and receives it. Here is the encapsulated data moving across the physical layer. The data link layer is the second layer in the OSI model. It is responsible for reliably getting messages to and from other computers. The data link layer is divided into two sub-layers. The first sub-layer is Logical Link Control, LLC. This is the logical connection between the data link layer and the network. The second sub-layer is MAC, Media Access Control. This controls the physical hardware. Air control ensures that data streams are transmitted accurately. There are three basic ways the data link layer performs each control error control. Number one, error prevention. Number two, error detection and retransmission. And number three, error correction. The data link layer encapsulates or puts data into frames. Frames contain sender addresses, destination addresses, control identifiers, and a data message. The data frames also perform an error check to make sure that the data message is free of errors. The data link layer protocols. Asynchronous transmission, also known as start-stop transmission. The sending computer can transmit, transmit whenever it wants to to the receiving computer. Synchronous transmission. The data is grouped all together and sent out to the receiving end all at one time. Synchronous data link control. This uses a controlled access media access protocol. Each of these frames begins and ends with a bit pattern called a flag. High level data link control is much the same as synchronous data link control with the exception that da address and control fields in the frame can be much longer. Ethernet protocol. There are many different Ethernet protocol version, versions. Ethernet uses carrier sense multiple access collision detection. In the Ethernet protocol, each computer listens to the physical layer before sending anything across the network. The point-to-point -point protocol was designed to transfer data over a point-to-point -point circuit. The PPP protocol is used commonly for connection over synchronous and asynchronous circuits.